Welcome, I'm Jianying Dong, Assistant Professor in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Mathematics, and Computer Science at Delft University of Technology. The topic of this lecture is electrical machines in electrical vehicles. The learning objectives of the lecture are as follows. First, we will explain the operation principle of electrical machines. Second, we will explore the different types of electrical machines in EVs. Third, we will learn the structure of the electrical machine. And after that, we will look at the performance indicators of electrical machines. At last, we will learn how to model an electrical machine. So, what are electrical machines? Electrical machines are devices used for the interconversion of electrical and mechanical energy. If you look at the left image, you can see the EV moving up the slope, and different forces are acting on the vehicle. For the EV to move up on the slope, the electrical machine needs to work as a motor, hence providing the power to the EV. When the EV is coming down the slope, as shown in the right image, the same electric machine will act as a generator, helping the driver to limit the speed of the car and recharge the battery. This shows the electric machines in EVs are reversible and can operate in either motor mode or generating mode. In this slide, we will see the different operation principles of various types of electric machines. The first one is based on the Lorentz force principle. The permanent magnets are stationary on a stator, and a constant current is passed through the rotor windings through a commutator, which produces a force on the rotor windings that rotates the rotor. The second one here operates based on the alignment torque between opposite magnetic poles where both rotor and stator are equipped with magnetic poles, and hence the rotor rotates at the same speed as the stator magnetic poles rotate. This speed is defined as the synchronous speed. The third principle is the reluctance torque, where the torque is produced because the rotor iron poles tend to align to the magnetic flux lines so that minimal magnetic reluctance is achieved. The rotor here also rotates with a synchronous speed. The difference compared to the alignment torque is that the rotor poles are purely passive iron poles here. The final one is based on the induced current, where the rotating magnetic field from the stator induces a current in the rotor, and the interaction of the induced current and the magnetic field produces torque in the motor. In order to have induced current, the rotor should rotate at asynchronous speed. That is to say, the rotor speed should be different from the synchronous speed. Based on above mentioned principles, various types of electrical machines are constructed. DC machines operate based on the Lorentz force. Synchronous machines rely on the alignment torque. Synchronous reluctance machines rely on the reluctance torque, while induction machines are based on induced current. The last three types are called AC machines because they are fed by alternating or AC current and are used in EVs more often. Here, you can see the actual and radio cut view of the four types of electric machines that are discussed before. The left one is the DC machine, where the electromagnet or permanent magnet poles are present on the stator. Direct current passes through the rotor through the commutator, producing the Lorentz force on the rotor. The second one is the induction machine, where conductors are short-circuited on both sides are used on the rotor to induce current. The third one is the synchronous reluctance machine, where shaped iron sheets are used on the rotor to introduce different magnetic paths with different reluctances. The fourth and the last one is the synchronous machine, which has permanent magnets embedded on the rotor. 
This helps the rotor align with the, the rotating magnetic field and rotate at synchronous speed. DC machines are rarely used in modern EVs because the brushes and the computators are not reliable enough. The three types of AC machines share the same static structure where three-phase windings are used to create the rotating magnetic field. Uh, let's took in, take a look uh, inside of an electrical machine. Physically, an AC machine comprises a stator, a set of state winding, rotor, and air gaps. There are two power terminals in an AC machine. The mechanical terminals are the rotor and the shaft, which provide mechanical power and is calculated as the torque multiplied by the mechanical angular speed of the rotor. The electrical terminal is the three-phase winding and the power associated is calculated from the three-phase power equation, root three times line voltage V multiplied by line current I and power factor cosine phi. In addition to the main components, the supporting structure, including the frame, the bearings, and the cooling system are needed. Let's take a special look at the three-phase state winding. The three-phase winding consists of multiple coils embedded in the state slots and interconnected together to form three phases displaced by 120 electrical degrees in space. The three-phase currents have the same amplitude and frequency and are displaced by 120 degrees in the temporal phase. When the balanced three-phase winding is fed by the balanced three-phase current, a rotating magnetic field will be produced in the air gap. The rotating speed is the synchronous speed, and the direction of rotation is determined by the three-phase sequence as we can see in the animations. Let's move on to the rotor structure of AC machines. For the synchronous machine, the rotor in synchronous machines can either have permanent magnets embedded in the rotor or electrically excitation windings with a current flowing through them, acting as electromagnets. The synchronous reluctance machines have shaped iron sheets to form a rotor that provides reluctance variation. The induction machines have a closed conduct cage for inducing the current in them. The table here summarizes the stator and the rotor structure of the three types of AC machines we have discussed so far. We have learned a bit about AC machines, but how to evaluate the performance of these machines? There are several indicators that play a crucial role in determining the performance of AC machines. The first one is the number of pro pairs, generally denoted by P. The next one is the electrical frequency, which is the current frequency in state winding. It is denoted by F and is measured in Hertz. The third indicator is the synchronous speed which is the rotational speed of the magnetic field. It is denoted by Ns and is derived by the formula Ns equal 60 times F divided by P. The next indicator is the mechanical speed, which is the rotational speed of the rotor. It is denoted by N measured in rotation per minute. Sometimes we use rotor angular speed omega instead which is measured in radians per second. For synchronous and synchronous reluctance machines, mechanical speed is equal to synchronous speed. For induction machines operating in motor mode, the synchronous speed is greater than mechanical speed. And for generating mode, the mechanical speed is greater than the synchronous speed. The next indicator is torque and power. These relations have already been discussed in previous slides. The last indicator is the efficiency, which can be calculated by taking the ratio of mechanical to electrical power for motor operation and the ratio of electrical to mechanical power for generating operation. Modeling of electrical machines is needed for various purposes, 
including power train sizing, performance evaluation, and control. First, let's take a look at the modeling of the AC machines in steady state. These are some important things to be considered in the steady state model. This model is only valid when speed and load are not varying. This model is used for efficiency of steady state current and voltage calculation. The model can be made using either a phase equivalent circuit or a phase diagram. Let's take the example of a surface mounted synchronous machine where the permanent magnets are mounted on the surface of the rotor. The phase equivalent circuit of the machine is shown where U phi is phase voltage and I phi is the phase current. E phi is the phase induced voltage which is proportional to the rotor speed multiplied by the induced voltage constant K. RS is the phase resistance, LS is the phase inductance. The single phase electromagnetic power can be calculated as E phi times I phi cosine gamma, where gamma is the phase angle between E phi and I phi. Then for a three phase machine, the total electromagnetic power of the machine will be three times of that. Dynamic modeling is very different from the steady state modeling. A dynamic model is valid both at steady state and in transients, that is, when either speed, load, supply, or all of them change. The dynamic model is used for the control design of electric machines. Since the dynamic model deals with the transients, hence it is modeled by time differential equations. Transformation of state variables plays a vital role in electrical machine dynamic modeling. If we look from the state system, then the three phase voltage and current are both dependent on rotor position, which makes the modeling process complicated. When the parameters are transformed to the rotating reference frame, we can simplify the three phase machine to its two phase equivalence, and the state variables are decoupled from the root position. Since the variables are reduced and are independent of root position, the transformation makes the computation much easier. Let's again take an example of a surface-mounted synchronous machine. The stationary UVW system is first transformed to a synchronous DQ system. The D axis in the DQ system is also known as the magnetic axis since it is aligned to the magnetic poles, and Q axis is also known as the torque axis since the current on the Q axis creates torque. This transformation leads to a set of equations in the dynamic model. In the equations, lambda denotes the flux linkage and the subscript denotes the D or Q components. L is the inductance, R is the resistance, I is current, U is voltage, and P is the number of pairs. That's the end of the lecture on electrical machines. The next lecture will be about the inverters used to drive electrical machines in EVs.